Good morning, everyone. We're so excited that you joined us here at The Water's Edge. If you're online with us today, check us out on Facebook or YouTube, and feel free to like, share, and comment. If you're live with us, here's a few things we'd like you to know about. We have a nursery and kids' church available right across the lot. Also, we're always in need of volunteers, so if you want to get plugged in, you can email us at watersedgevolunteer at gmail.com or text your contact info to 337-352-2443. And remember, if you know anyone that's struggling, please invite them to church or share online content with them because this is a place where broken people belong and everyone is welcome. We have a full experience for you this morning, so let's get ready to worship and receive a message from Pastor Tony.
Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never fail me yeah. I know the night Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough Keep me within your My heart will sing your praise again Your promise stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never fail me Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You never fail me
What's up everyone? Good morning and welcome to our online Water's Edge worship experience. Once again, thank you so very much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Also, we want those of you to know that are ready to come back and worship with us live and in person. We are open 930 and 1115. Come on back each Sunday. We would love to see your face in person and hug your neck and worship with you. But for those of you that continue to tune in and like and share these online messages, thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. Also, for those of you that continue to worship with us online and meeting our $10 challenge, thank you so very much for worshiping with us through your generosity. That allows us to love more people, help more people, feed more people, and serve more people. In fact, our next food pantry will be the first Thursday in March, we expect to feed about 2,000 people from our community, from our hurting city on that day. And that's all because of your love, your generosity, and your servanthood. So thank you so very much for that. You know, when I was growing up, we had video stores, but today we have streaming services like Netflix and Hulu. And the great thing about Netflix and Hulu is the internet never closes. But when I was growing up and we didn't have all that, we had Blockbuster Video and Hollywood Video and these smaller mom and pop shops. They had closing times. And most of these video stores, especially the big video stores, they would close at either 9 or 10 o'clock on the weekdays. And they would close at either 11 or midnight on the weekends, but there was a certain time that they would close. And if you wanted to rent a movie, you had to get in there before closing time. And then there came a time when every single video rental store closed in America. In fact, in 2014, the final blockbusters in America shut down, except for one. It's in Oregon, and it's mainly just a tourist attraction. But that really teaches us something important. And this is what it is, and remember this today. Sometimes things that were once a part of our life, sometimes these things eventually come to an end. Sometimes what was once a part of our past, sometimes what was once a part of our routine, sometimes what was once a part of our patterns, our relationships, our expectations, sometimes what was once a part of our plans, our plans, our plans, sometimes these things eventually fade away. Sometimes these things eventually disappear and come to an end. And when this happens, and it will, that's when you and I have to learn how to deal with it and overcome it. When what was once important to us, what was once a part of our life eventually comes to an end. And so today we finally finish up with our current series entitled The Video Store. Next Sunday we start a very cool new series I think you're going to love. Of, but we finally finish up with a video store today. Now, the first week we talked about the danger in comparing ourselves to other things and other people. And we talked about how it's never fair to compare. It's never fair to compare yourself to someone else and it's never fair to them either. The second week we talked about how peace comes from God. And if you want the peace in your heart and in your life that guards your heart and guards your mind that surpasses all understanding, the only way to get that is to step into integrity. Peace comes through integrity. And then last week we talked about overcoming our personal shame. And so today we finish up with our final personal challenge. And today I have a feeling that some of you, maybe many of you, uh, that your faith, maybe you have this feeling that your faith is maybe coming to an end. That your faith, it was once a part of your life. That your faith, it was once a part of all these memories and very significant moments in your childhood, church, camp, whatever it was. That maybe your faith is about to come to an end or maybe it has come to an end. Or maybe you know it's about to dissolve in your life and you're not really sure what to do about it if anything can be done about it at all. And so today I want to teach you one thing that you need to not let your faith come to an end. Sometimes when we look back on our life, we see that some very important things that we had in our life that was once a part of our life faded away. And sometimes we miss those things. Sometimes we choose to walk away from those things. But sometimes we feel like our faith is coming to an end. And sometimes we don't want it to. Or sometimes we're not sure how to stop it or what to do about it. And today I want to talk to you about the one thing. And it's kind of surprising. The one thing that we all need to make sure that our faith will last. Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 3. 
Jesus told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell among the footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Verse 8, still other seeds fell on fir- fertile soil, and they sprouted a crop that was 30, 60, even 100 times as much as they had been planted, and these crops lasted. Some seeds fell on good, fertile soil. They developed roots. They grew, and they produced crops, fruits that lasted. So the question is, how can our heart and our faith be like this fertile soil? We follow Jesus And we keep going forward. We have discipleship in our life and we keep going forward. We grab a hold of passion and love, love for other people, serving other people, and we keep going forward. We set goals for our life. We set goals for our future and we keep going forward. We have our walk with God and we keep going forward. Have you ever heard statements like this when you go to church? I'm going to let Jesus be Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Jesus is either the Lord of everything or he's the Lord of nothing in your life. Or have you ever heard this? When you follow Jesus, it's all or nothing. Or you need to be sold out for Jesus, radical for Jesus, extreme for Jesus, on fire for Jesus. Or a casual Christian is not a real Christian. A casual Christian is just someone who's playing church. If you're not 100% radical for Jesus, then you're not a real Christian. We hear statements like this all the time. And the intentions... When you go to church and you hear statements like that, sometimes they're good. Basically, the intentions behind these statements is just saying, hey, love Jesus, be faithful to Jesus, live for Jesus, have a very real and genuine and authentic faith. But these statements also, if you don't, if you don't understand this, you will one day. These statements also created a ton of shame for people like me in my life and a ton of shame for people like you in your life because sometimes in our life we would fail, not that it's okay it's just reality sometimes in our life we make mistakes not that it's okay it's just reality sometimes in this life we have weak moments sometimes in this life we mess up sometimes in this life we give up sometimes in this life we say yes to the wrong opportunities not that it's okay but it's just reality sometimes in this life we are broken we don't try to justify it we don't try to make excuses but the fact is this it is just reality and those statements would rush back to our mind I failed at making God my everything I must not be a real Christian I failed at making Jesus Lord of all I failed at making Jesus my passion so I must not be a good Christian or a real Christian or a strong Christian I feel fake I feel casual I feel like a hypocrite I feel so ashamed and when you go to through this and then every time you go to church and your church makes you feel this way when you feel like church is your critic when you come to church and you you feel shamed and criticized for having weak moments, for having failures, for having a past, for having downfalls and battles. When you feel like church is your critic, then you feel like God is your critic. And when you feel like God is your critic, you feel constant shame. Let me say that again. When you feel like religion judges you, then you feel like church is your critic. And when you feel like church is your critic, then you feel like God is your critic. And when you feel like God is your critic, then you will give up because you feel constant over overwhelming shame and you can't go forward shame will rob your heart of change shame will always rob your heart of true life change so what's the one thing your heart needs to be fertile soil what's the one thing your heart needs to produce changes that last in this life by the way if you always broadcast to other people how they mess up and how they fail eventually they're going to believe that they'll never be good enough if you're always pointing out to them how they mess up and how they fail eventually they're just going to give up I had a friend of mine that I went to school with, great guy. He just didn't have balance in his life. 
If he had an obsession, he went all in. When he was obsessed with a sport, he went all in. When he was obsessed with partying, he went all in. You couldn't take this guy to a restaurant and have two beers with your meal. If he had two beers, he was going to have 86. But also, when he developed a faith in Jesus, he acted like he went all in. And I remember one time, my friend, after revival service, he said God got all over him and he developed this passion for Jesus in that moment. He goes, man, I'm going all in for God. I'm going all in for Jesus. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. But the moment he started to not feel it about a year later, he went right back to his bad choices. Why? Why do we do that? Why did he do that? Because he had no balance in his heart. That's why he needed balance, not an extreme. He needed balance, not an obsession. And because it didn't last was because he didn't have balance in his heart. Now, remember this today. This is very key. And I think this will help you. If you're still with me, say I'm still with you. Obsession is when you do something that you love and you excel at it. But discipline is when you do something that you don't really want to do and you excel at it anyway. And in our life, we need both. And let me tell you why. There will be times in your life when you're in love with and you're obsessed with your faith, your relationship with Jesus, what your faith is producing in your life, the new changes that you're making, the new purpose that you feel, the new peace that you feel, loving people and serving people. There's going to be times when you have an obsession for this, and so you go all in, and you grow, and you make changes. But if you want those changes to last, and if you want your life to keep going forever forward, you don't just need obsession and passion, you also need discipline discipline because one day your obsession and your passion for your faith and for your walk with God and for other people and for making positive changes in your la in life and making those changes last one day your obsession and passion and your want to to do these things is going to take a hit and this is when your discipline needs to take over this is when you don't need to quit and walk away because you don't feel it anymore you will never accomplish anything in this life that's significant and worthwhile because you feel like it have some balance between your feelings and your discipline and get up and keep going forward anyway. Now, let's take a look at where your life is and where my life is right now. Many people today feel like their life is not where they want it to be. And one of the ways we can overcome shame is to stop looking back and asking this question, what went wrong? We always do that. We always look back and ask the question, what went wrong? But if you always focus on what went wrong, then the weight of shame is always going to keep you from going forward in this life. What went wrong is what we already know. What went wrong was our choices. What went wrong was our patterns. What went wrong was our excuses. What went wrong was our irresponsibility. What went wrong was our path in life. And we already know all that. We know what went wrong. And so to go forward, stop asking what went wrong and start asking what's next. Now, in light of all that, here's a few things I want to teach you today. So number one, if you're still with me, say I'm still with you. Number one, to go forward, you need balance. Not everyone will remain a devoted Christian. Not everyone will remain remain devoted to life change and devoted to love. Not everyone will remain devoted to compassion. Not everyone will remain positive or dedicated to a better future. Not everyone is going to remain dedicated to having better goals for their life. And so I want to share with you how you can make it last, how you can make your faith last, how you can make your goals and your vision and your purpose and your love last. This is how. And it's not all or nothing. It's not all or nothing because the reality is you will always fall short of trying to give Jesus your everything. Another battle, another failure, another weakness, another storm will always come along. You will never be able to give Jesus your everything. Our goal is not to be perfect and our goal is not to be obsessed. Our goal is to be disciplined even when the world is falling apart. That's what it means to be a disciple, not to be obsessed, but to be disciplined. And so the one thing we need to make changes last in our life is balance. Listen, just because you take two steps backwards doesn't mean you need to give up and take 500 more steps backwards. And just because you can't take 100 steps forward doesn't mean you can't take three steps forward. Stop creating shame in your life over small setbacks. Have some balance in your life. You say, Tony, why? Well, that leads me to number two. And notice this today. Because of our sin, 
We are worse than we think we are. But because of the cross, we are more forgiven than we think. You're probably more selfish. You're probably meaner angrier, weaker, and worse than you think you are. But that doesn't mean you have to give up. That doesn't mean you have to give up on God, give up on people, give up on your relationships, give up on the future, give up on your vision. You say, Tony, yeah, but Tony, it's all or nothing with God. You can't do that. No one can. But you can have balance and not give up. It's not all or nothing with Jesus. It's always growing. Understand that. With Jesus, it's not all or nothing. It's always growing. Make sure that you're always disciplined to grow. Be disciplined to always grow and go forward, even if you lose some of that fire sometimes. Because no matter what, you're more forgiven than you think you are. You may not feel like you deserve it. You may not feel like you're worthy of it. But no matter what, God loves you and you are completely forgiven because of the blood of the cross, which leads me to number three. And this is what it is. God is not your critic. The gospels describe God is our father, our shepherd, our teacher, our comforter. A father, a shepherd, a teacher, a comforter will help you go forward, not shame you. A father, a helper, a teacher, a comforter will help you go forward, not shame you. In Matthew 16, Jesus tells us to deny ourselves, take up our cross every single day, and follow him. Let me tell you what that doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that you're going to have this perfect life because you gave your life to God. It doesn't mean that you're always going to be devoted, that you're always going to be strong, that you're always going to be mature, that you're always going to have this obsession with God and obsession with loving people, that you're always going to be on top of your game 100% of the time it doesn't mean that this is what it means it means that you've accepted the fact that you have failed and you will fail but you're balanced and so when you lose your obsession your discipline takes over because you're balanced your heart is like fertile soil when you lose your obsession your discipline takes over and so your discipline will help you live balance you keep walking with Jesus anyway because of your discipline you keep walking forward anyway because of your discipline you keep loving God and loving people and going forever forward anyway because of your discipline not your obsession and so this is what it is the one thing that we need to make sure that your faith it was once an important part of your life. Doesn't one day come to an end? The one thing you need is balance in between our obsession and our discipline. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so very much for tuning in. We hope you have an amazing week and we cannot wait to see you back next week. We love you all. What a great message from Pastor Tony. And we really hope that today's worship experience has encouraged and helped you in some way. If you were moved by today's service and want to stay tuned in the rest of the week on social media, check us out at Water's Edge Gathering on Facebook or Water's Edge underscore LC on Instagram. You can also download our app where you can do online giving, listen to worship songs, and replay messages from Pastor Tony. If you want to learn more about salvation and baptism, want to volunteer, or need a prayer request, visit our Welcome Center in the lobby and one of our great volunteers will take down your information. We absolutely love you guys and we can't wait to see you back next week at the Water's Edge where everyone has a place to belong.